In my drinking days, I spent every last cent on alcohol. I could barely clothe myself, feed myself, pay my rent, take bus fare to work. Sometimes I had to quit a job because I had no money to go to work. I couldn't afford even to work. That's how bad it was. I drank everything away. And I remember at the end of my drinking, I went to a treatment center called Meadow Creek. And I still had no money. I had maybe three or four bucks, maybe 10 bucks, the max. And I'm in the smoking room and I'm bumming cigarettes off people. And the treatment center people, you know, didn't like that. The other, the other inmates of the treatment center <laughs> didn't like that. So they went up to the boss of the, uh, the, uh, the rehab and told on me for bumming cigarettes. So the head honcho, the head psychiatrist, gave me hell and he called me a mooch. He says, Terry G, you're a mooch. And I, and I remember being shattered. I remember being like, what? I'm a mooch? What the hell, I'm a mooch? I just don't have any money. And I broke down and cried and bawled my eyes out. And I was at a meeting, 12 step meeting, maybe a week, two weeks later. And I really listened because in those days I was like hyper into recovery. I still love recovery, but I'm not as, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but in early recovery, I was really totally into it. You know, life or death situation, right? And I heard that tradition. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. And I took that tradition and I'm like, you know, that makes perfectly great sense to me. Being self-supporting through our own contributions. And that doesn't mean just the group. It means for us too, as individuals, you know, being broke and having no money, I felt I was at the, the mercy of people, places and things. I really did. You know, the landlord is at the mercy too. I was going to the food banks, you know, you could only go to the food banks like once a week in those days. I'd have to ask people to buy me a coffee at a, after a meeting which they didn't mind. I have to ask them to give me a few cigarettes, which they didn't mind. Don't get me wrong, people were very generous to me in 12-step programs, but it really weared on me as an individual. It made me feel less than because I couldn't support myself. You know, I, welfare got me a room in the YMCA and I lived there and I got myself a little job. I wasn't making very much, I think about 260 bucks a week. I could pay my rent buy some food, I couldn't afford a car or anything, get myself a nice bus pass, go all around the city with the bus pass, and I had a little few dollars in my pocket if I wanted to go out for a hamburger or go out with the guys after the meeting for a coffee, I could buy myself a coffee. I didn't have to rely on anybody. I know we don't talk about money a lot in the program, and some people might even not even like this video, but looking after ourselves financially, looking after our financial responsibilities, is really critical for me anyways, and I hope it is for you because it makes us more independent. It'll clear up our thinking that we don't have to rely on people to support us. We can buy our food that we want to buy. We can fend off the creditors maybe. <laughs> I just went bankrupt. Believe me, they re my car too. Start paying our bills. I never had a phone until I started working and became financially responsible for myself. In those days, we had landlines, we didn't have cell phones. And pay my rent on time, all the time, instead of being thrown out. My last, day, my last year of drinking, I lived in 12 or, not 12, probably six or seven different places because I couldn't pay the rent. Believe it or not, they just kicked me right out. And through all those moves and everything, I, think I ended up with nothing, basically, the clothes on my back. Being able to pay for yourself. I'm not saying you have to make a great living, but be able to afford the life that you're in is a great feeling of independence. And you're not so, I don't know, at the mercy of people, places and things for lesser words, okay? So we are self-supporting through our own contributions. That just doesn't mean for the group itself, it means for the individual too. It really does. And because I have money now, my, my life is a lot better, believe me. Cleaned up my credit rating. I was able to buy a house, all that kind of stuff. I'm able to give of myself more freely because I can show up. I'm more reliable because of money. And I can give back to the 12-step group 
that I, I tend to and other groups that I go to because I have money. I have the ability to do that. I can support myself and help support other groups and use my financial uh, stability to help other members like driving them to meetings, maybe buying them a book, maybe buying them a coffee and not making them feel less than or loaning them money or buying something for them at Christmas time when no one else is doing that for them. And I do those things, but I do it in secret and I do it all the time. And I don't need kudos for it, believe me. I don't tell anybody. That's the trick, right? Do a good deed, doesn't matter what it is, but don't tell people, just do it and keep it under your hats for lesser words, okay? So just remember that. But financial independence or looking after yourself financially is a great thing because it'll give you the ability to help other people in the program, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you can take a second, please subscribe. Can you take another second and hit that like button? I'd really appreciate it, okay? God bless. See you all next week and ciao for now.